Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Idiot Quilter. It's episode 102, and it is Friday, June the 2nd, 2023. And in another day, day and a half, we'll be off to the East Coast. More about that later. Okay, so projects. Well, let's start with Walter today. Walter is wearing something that should be mine. Well, yeah, I finished another it. shirt, and so I decided this is my shirt. Well, that was short and sweet. It is in the color I like. I like that fabric. Well, you can probably have it if you want. It would look beautiful with yeah. me because it just bring out my eyes mm -hmm. and everything. No, you need a shirt now, too. You need to wear something. We'll just When we get back home, you'll be working on more of my shirts for me. I need more shirts. Mm -hmm. I need more shirts. It'd be nice and made in shorts, too. And then I yeah, didn't yeah, have to yeah. go to Mark's Work Warehouse and try and see what fits. You know what? The problem with buying men's shorts for me, so there's this place here in Canada, it's called Mark's Work Warehouse. They started out as selling clothing for men who work on construction and stuff like that, and they still do. But then they branched out and got into more casual type wear and jeans and things like that and khakis and everything and shirts for men. And they also have a women's section now as well. Well, that's where I buy most of my clothes. Um do the fact that they actually have clothes that are not necessarily all slim fit <laughs> you know they're more classic fit or as i like to refer to it old man fat um so i went to buy new shorts well shorts come in various lengths don't you know six inch eight inch and ten inch well walter gets ten inch because he's just that much taller than me so they're they don't they fit properly on him at the length that you want, you know, just above the knee. But 10 inch on me are just above the ankle uh, kind of thing. I look like one of the lollipop kids in the Wizard of Oz if I get those. So then I'm looking for 8 inch, which I eventually got, but trying to find them in a waist size that actually fits. And you got to try them on because that's just a suggestion anymore as far as... Yeah, you can you buy know, two of the same pair of pants. Exactly. They the have same the same pair. waist size and they'll fit both totally different differently with it. So it's just a suggestion. So uh, there was somebody in the store helping me out because they have their perpetual inventory, whatever. She had her little inventory gun and she's reading, oh, yeah, we're so, we should. There uh, seemed to be an abundance of size 32 waist yeah. shorts. I guess a lot, not a lot of skinny people shop at Mark's Work Warehouse anymore. Well, no, and there's no, uh, actually, there weren't. Any, if you were skinnier than that, you certainly wouldn't be able to find it. No, you wouldn't there. find anything else. And like even if you were a little bigger than that, it was hard to get stuff. It yeah, like, like forty the was the eighty percent of the shorts were size thirty-two. Yeah. But the length of the leg. So I tried on a pair that were six inches. Well, no, those are right up your gitch. Um, apparently, those are hiking shorts of that that length. I was told. Uh, she finally found me. She said, well, we're supposed to have two pairs here that are 38 with eight inch uh, legs on them. Well, she went through the rack. She couldn't find them. But eventually I did get something that fits in the whole bit. And they're eight inch and eight inch seems to be the ones that fit my height properly. <sighs> it's so much easier. Someone just custom made me shorts. Yeah, you know, I know. Kept me in them, but, you know. Well, you could have bought a 10 inch one and then I would have shortened it. It kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't yeah, it? Know. But whatever. But anyways, yeah, I got shorts. And I don't know how we got on this conversation about it. Oh, yeah, because my tailor here. Um, I need him to make me more clothes. Please. Yeah, I have to make some more shorts. I only made one pair before. Well, so. I have probably enough shorts for the summer now. But if you start now for next, for next summer, year, yeah. then maybe <laughs> get some. Well, I don't know. You don't need shorts now. You bought more. Well, I may need them next year. Okay. I might be bigger. I don't know. It seems that's the way it goes. Okay, so what have I been working on? Well, the quilt from hell number two is now completely done. And here it is. It's all bound. It's all um, quilted, the whole bit. And it's out of my hair. And I've already gone over the problems that I was having with it, except I don't know if I mentioned the one problem I had when I was actually quilting it, when it was on the long arm, which was not a fault of the pattern but i think i mentioned this an idiot quilter i i doubled the batting in this one mainly because i was too lazy to unfold it <laughs> i'd like to say it's because i want to make it fluffier 
what I managed to do is make it stiffer. Uh, although it did soften up when I put it in the wash because the quilting pattern I'm using is very dense and I didn't think about that. And I ran into a little problem, which I also mentioned on the Idiot Quilter, where I inadvertently pulled up sort of a double length or something happened when I put in a new new uh, spool of bobbin thread. And it started to not really tuck the quilt, but started making it lumpy. Uh, so I stopped that and I did correct it. I got it fixed up. I got everything back online. I'm kind of proud of the fact that I was able to do that because it took me 45 minutes, but um, I did solve that problem. So there it is. It doesn't look bad. It looks okay to the naked eye, to somebody who's not a quilter and not studying it. You probably won't notice that much in it. This is not a challenge for any of you out there to pull a Walter and go, what happened here? There's a lot of things happened here. A lot of things. And in fact, we were in Ultimate Sewing, our local quilt store the other day. I was picking up some things that I had ordered. And I was talking to one of the people on staff there about this particular pattern because she remembered that I had done another Patty carry Patty Patchwork one uh, last year. And she was working on that one too. I don't think she ever finished it. And... Uh, told her about this one. And while we were talking, the owner of the store, Shirley came by and she says, oh, you're talking about Patty's patchwork. She says, oh God, those patterns. She says, she hates them. She won't carry them in the store. So, you know, it's not just me. It's not just me. Other people have come into the store and complained to the owner about how badly they're uh, written. And I know right now I'm sounding like a broken record because I have said this now for the last week on anything you've seen. I have brought this up, but it pisses me off. It pisses me off because you pay good money for a pattern. You trust that because it's a published pattern from a re reputable company that it's going to work. And I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong with a pattern, which are all user error. You don't need to have it compounded by writing a pattern that just is wrong. It's just wrong. You know, like test your damn patterns. So anyways, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Do not invest in a Patty Patchwork pattern because she doesn't know what she's doing. Period. End of it. And I don't know if she'll be at the... Uh, uh, probably the not. Probably not. If she's there and if I had a drink, I will walk up to her and go, Patty, you... And here's why. Then they'll have to carry me out because I'll probably have verbal assault and I'll be put in prison and I'll never leave the East Coast again. Oh, well. We can only hope. Yeah. Let's see. Read my lips. What word am I thinking of? Starts with an F and it's not fire truck. Okay. Let's move on, shall we, to announcements. All right. Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen. There will not be one next Wednesday because both Stephanie and I are down in the East Coast for the quilt show. The week after that, which is June the 14th on Wednesday. I'll be pitching with Stephanie and Stephen. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, again, pick a finger. I'll give you a hint. Okay. Um, what was I saying? So on June the 14th, Stephanie will be soloing, sewing with Stephanie and Stephen. We'll just be sewing with Stephanie because we'll still be out in the East Coast. Having said that, you will find a link in the show notes for that week. It is different from the one we usually use. Usually I have a reoccurring one that I use for that. But because that's under my account with Zoom, Stephanie can't get into that one. So she had to set up her own link. So that's the link you will see in the show notes today. I also sent that link out to everybody on my pop-up so day and craft and chat list. Now I know that there are a bunch of you on that list that don't partake of sewing with uh, Stephanie and Stephen, which probably because you either have jobs or you hate us, um, one or the other. Um, so everybody got it. And Stephanie is going to post it on her videos too, as well. So it'll be there. You'll just be minus me. And I want you to be on your best behavior because Stephanie will tell me. If you people are cutting me up behind my back, cut me up to my face. <laughs> In fact, most of you do anyways. So what am I worried about? 
Okay, so, oh, I bought a new thing this week. AirPods have nothing to do with quilting. Well, actually they do, because I usually have my ear pods in my ears when I'm working on Lucy. But these ones are very fancy. Walter had a set. I can't and, to buy the same ones. I yeah, right. Well, the other ones I was happy with, but they kept falling out of my ears. And apparently these other ones, they have little thingies on them that stick into your ears. And they cancel out sound really well. Like, really well. Like, if you had a screaming child on an airplane sitting next to you, you wouldn't be able to hear them. Yeah, That's I was using thing. them on the airplane on the way back from Vancouver. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't even hear the noise of the plane. It was, like, dead silent. So now when I'm using them... when It I'm was like we weren't even flying. So when I have them in my ears and I'm working on Lucy, Walter has his tendency just to walk in, and I turn around, and he's standing there. And I, like, sort of shit my pants kind of thing. Go, Whoa. Well, now it'll be even easier for him. Yeah, and he likes doing that. You know, it's the kind of person he is. Sadistic. Now, mind you, maybe yeah. you shouldn't have it right on silent when you're uh, stitching on your Lucy because if Lucy decides to act up, you won't hear her. That's true. Oh, well, we'll see. Okay, and <clears throat> while we're down in the East Coast, we're leaving this Sunday, I will try to do what I did when we were out West. I will try to post a video almost every day now no promises on that because there's so many factors that can work into it like i don't know what we're going to have for internet connection for one thing um will there be a stephen and walter live well there might be a couple of them but they're not going to be on the usual day you'll not know so make sure you've got the little bell make sure you subscribe and you have the little bell notification turned on so you'll get notifications when these things happen um I have a thought in my head. I don't know if it'll materialize because uh, I would like to do a Stephen and Walter and Stephanie live, but I don't know if that's going to work out. Again, there's many factors. So no promises, but there will be something when I can get them up, they'll go up. Okay. So I thought by now I would have my iron back, but apparently I don't. And I haven't actually contacted the company. I mean, I know the guy had some in their company. They had some things ahead of mine. So I don't doubt that they will eventually get it fixed. And with me going away for the next two weeks, it's not like I need it. Um, but when I get back, I'll have to give them a call if I don't get an email before then saying that it's all been fixed up. But you want to know something? I've been using the Elysio, my old Elysio, uh, while this one's been out. And I kind of like my old Elysio. Um, now, the one thing that really pisses me off about the Elysio is when you've got it on and it's on all the time, it doesn't hold that much water. So you're constantly having to fill it back up, even if you haven't been using the steam feature on it. It just seems to evaporate. Um, but it heats up really quick and it is it gets really hot. It does press seams really well. And then you have the little pop-up feature, you know, how it, you put it down, it pops up. Um, but I'd uh, rather have my reliable <laughs> back, uh, with it. So we'll see. Okay. So today you saw that I put in the, uh, headline, I hate tulip pink. And I know that probably got some of you really PO'd at me because I'm probably the only person on the face of the planet that doesn't like tulip pink. But we're going to come to the reason for me saying that in a moment. But last week we asked the question, what's your worst story about a fabric purchase? And how do you feel about buying fabric from Joann's, Hobby Lobby's, Michael's, and or Walmart? Because all of these places uh, are not selling the kind of quilting cotton we are used to from a dedicated quilt store. And uh, we in Canada don't have Hobby Lobbies and Joann's. Or Joann's. We have Michael's and Walmart. And our Walmart doesn't sell. Uh, they sell some fat quarters, but they're not very high quality. No. And um, our Michael's, I think, sells a limited amount of They sell prepackaged uh, uh, sort of meterage, like yeah. half meter, meter things, but they're all prepackaged. They don't, you can't buy it off the bolt kind of a thing at least at the michaels we have in this area i don't know if there are some michaels in around that do sell that more 
Um, I have no idea, but for us, no. So anyways, I thought it would be really interesting to see what people say, because I know there are some people who absolutely love Joanne's. Um, and others who, you know, the only reason they'll go into a Joanne's is because they've got a coupon. But I thought when we went in jo Joanne's in the U.S., uh, now this is a few years ago, um, they did have some quality fabric, but they were like in a premium section or something. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the, and it was a lot more expensive. And uh, a lot of the stuff that they had that was, you know, a more reasonable price was just, you know, you might as well buy it off of Teemu uh, kind of a thing. <laughs> But um, but anyways, it, I wanted to know what you people say about this. So I've got some of people's comments here. And some of this is very enlightening. Well, all of it's enlightening, actually. So Kim R. wrote, I started quilting with Joanne and Walmart fabric, fabric because I didn't know better. <clears throat> the quilts are very faded after just a few washes. And one had color run. So much work I put in for the disappointing results. I'm trying to use the last of it up, and it does work well for mug rugs, pot holders, napkins, etc. Small projects for utility. I agree 100%. You are better off to shop the sales clearance at your local quilt shops or online. If you really search, you can get the quality at a big discount. Then your project can last a lifetime and not a few months. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I would suspect that that the stuff we saw uh, in Joanne and what little we've seen in Walmart, I would suspect that it would fade very, very quickly. And uh, the color run here, too, on some of it. Because, I don't know, where is this fabric manufactured? Yeah, like we do have a fabric uh, fabric store here called Fabricland, and they sell quilting on but it's uh, designs that I've never seen anywhere else. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the quality of the stuff is that they sell. And at the at we, as we call it, it's Fabric Land, but we like to refer to it as the F store. Um, their prices are always a lot more than in a quilt store or anywhere else. But they have this membership plan that you can pay 20 or $25 a year for, which gets you special discounts at certain times. They sometimes have members exclusive sales or something like that. Well, they're kind of like the Joann's and Michael's coupons, you know, 50% off, but yeah, but they've raised the price by 50%. So it's yeah. really not- But even their uh, needles and their thread and everything else is much more than our local quilt store sells and stuff at. Yeah. So it's not really, but they sell apparel fabric. So it's yeah, well, the, and, and uh, finding a store that sells apparel fabric around this area is difficult. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are stuck having to go there. Um, so then, um, Stephanie from Quilting with Stephanie Stitches, she sa says, um, as for Hobby Lobby, they do carry some decent things. They have some Michael Miller and Kona but I don't tend to shop there. I prefer to shop support quilt shops. Joann's and Walmart is a no for me. Their fabric is thin, rough, and loose weave. Joann's has some better quality, but it is still, in my opinion, not as nice as quilt shop quality fabric, but it costs as much as the quilt shop yardage, especially if you can hit the sales rack at a quilt shop. So yeah, um, the thing with Hobby Lobby is, and we have been to a Hobby Lobby, and it was back before I was quilting. It was when I was doing paper crafting and stuff. And I'd heard a lot about Hobby Lobby and the great selection and all that kind of stuff. And yes, they're, they've got everything. They've got home decor products. They have fabric. They have scrapbooking, crafting. They have it all uh, in there. But here's the problem with Hobby Lobby. They are not LGBTQ friendly. In fact, they are very right Christian organization and they make no bones about that. And to the point where the LGBT community have boycotted them, if there's one in their area. Um, and uh, I'm not going to support something like that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to support bigots and uh, prejudicial uh, companies at all. Kind of like the Chick-fil-A of only of uh, crafting supplies. Um, same kind of thing. And I've had some other people tell me about that as well, that they don't, agree with uh, I mean, their politics businesses should be impartial and uh not show their political viewpoints i in my opinion um like i mean 
a business may be right wing or something like that, but if they don't advertise it, then I'll probably end up shopping there without realizing. Yeah. It, so. so they should get, at the least they should just keep their mouth shut then. Yeah. I mean that would make good business sense, isn't it? You want to make money to keep your doors open. Why alienate some of your consumer public? Um, but that's one reason why I wouldn't shop there. And I never have been in a Hobby Lobby when I was quilting, so I have no idea about their fabric. But I think there's some other comments about that here further on. Now, Lisa Marie says, I agree with you on the Timu fabric. I also watched a video where someone purchased some that smelled so bad, musty-like, that she had to throw it away. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same video I saw, but... Um, uh what's her at? lessons learned uh she uh showed a team new haul that she had bought and she got some of the fabric like i did to try and she said it smelled horrible uh, and i don't know if that's the same one now when the fabric that i got from team new it did have a chemical smell to it it wasn't terrible but I, and i think it washed out in that little sample patch that i did um it seemed to have washed out that smell but nevertheless, it makes you wonder, okay, what are they using on their fabric to why what's this is this chemical toxic? You know, it doesn't yeah. come from China. You know, the rules for are a little bit looser in China when it comes to harmful chemicals and things in products. Um, what were you gonna say? Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, Lisa Marie goes on to say, as for Joanne's versus Hobby Lobby versus Walmart, to rank them from good to bad, in my humble opinion, Hobby Lobby has decent fabric than Joanne's. Lastly is Walmart. So this individual, she says that Hobby Lobby is better than it's Joanne's, than it's Walmart in terms of quality. Um, Marilyn says, I made a quilt using Tula fabrics with the designer essential solids. This fabric was so thin with fraying that it kept wrapping around my presser foot. This fabric fabric is only around eight to nine US dollars, I guess, per yard as compared to regular Tula at around 13 to 14 US dollars. Have used Kona solids without any issues. The Tula designer solids match so well though with her lines very disappointing okay i'm a little confused about this as it's written here she's talking about tula fabrics with the designer essentials solids i'm not sure what that is does tula come out with a more discounted line of fabrics or something or is somebody else manufacturing something and using tula's name on it I, i'm really confused by this because it seems to be a definitely a different quality uh, than the regular Tula fabric. Which would think that it's um, not actually a Tula product because yeah. uh, you would think that the uh, the um, Tula products would be a uh, pretty much identical in, in well, yeah. quality. You think she would probably, yeah, keep because, I mean, she's so well-known designer and... Uh, you know she is also known for the quality of her fabrics so mm -hmm. i could see so i don't i'm i'm really confused by this particular message but this is why i'm reading it out to you maybe marilyn can explain that a little bit more detail um because i'm not really sure what you mean um you have to remember we are in canada a lot of the things that you probably take as americans as you know everyday regular brands that you have access to we don't we do not see these things in this country. I mean, I think you've heard me talk before about any time we've been in the States, we go into the Walmart because, and we're amazed because we see things on the shelves in the yeah, Walmarts like, that we don't get we here. Have, uh, we have a very limited selection in Canada. Yeah. And a lot of people in Canada end up shopping in the U.S. because you have so much more selection yeah. than what we have. Like, uh, so, you know, some of the things that you mentioned that you take for granted are common knowledge to everybody in North America. No, they're not. Um, Kristen says, I once made the mistake of purchasing a fabric I had liked and it was the worst fabric fabric I ever worked with. I no longer buy quilting fabrics from Joann's because it's all second run cheap fabrics. And that's something I hadn't thought about. 
that might be it. These might be seconds. Yeah, like there, we have been told that certain stores in our area, like mm -hmm. uh, some uh, the fabric land and other stores, sometimes carry um, there. Some of their products are actually seconds, and you can tell that by uh, usually the color dots that are on the um, salvage or whatever. If they don't line up together, yeah, if, there, if there's a bit of a shift, a if bit of a, a shadow, color shift or shadow, that's a good indication that that fabric is a, a second. Is a second. It didn't. It didn't print off properly when they first ran it, so they didn't put it into the regular quilt stores. But places like maybe Joann's or whatever can pick it up for less money, and they're selling it. If you don't know, they're not telling you it's seconds. Um, how do we know this about the dots? Shirley at Ultimate Sewing told us about that. We did not know that. So now, if we're someplace we don't know, I, I will sometimes take a look at the salvage and just take a look at the dots to see. Um, and I know in Fabric Land, the place we've been talking about, the F-Store up here, yeah, you can find a lot of examples of that. So, yeah, so that's a good point about the seconds that Kristen made. Sandra says... I used to buy fabric from Joann's in the 90s when I was a beginner quilter and did not know any better. I have art quilts from that period that have not aged well. The fabrics are not fade resistant, even though they are not in direct sunlight. Comparing the front to the back is astounding. It is not good quality fabric. So for the last 30 years, my shopping has been in quilt stores. I did notice when I went to Joann's last week, they are the exclusive seller for Liberty of London Tana Lawn Fabrics. Now, so if I want some of those <clears throat> at $38 a yard US, I'll be buying them at Joann's. So, yeah, actually, you might check into Kaufman produces um, a cotton lawn product as well, if you want to look around for it. Um, and it's a, it, the quality of the fabric is similar to uh, what the Liberty of London is. It's a, a type of cotton weave that they use called lawn, L-A-W-N. And uh, uh, like cottons come in all different kinds of things. Like you can get cotton, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, canvas type fabrics and stuff like you that. You can get a cotton blend. It's blended yeah, with and polyester. You get blended with polyester. And so cotton lawn is not necessarily exclusive to Liberty of London. It is a type of cotton fabric. So, yeah. And Liberty of London, if it's truly Liberty of London, is expensive. Yeah, Very it is. Expensive. Thirty-eight dollars so, sounds pretty much right yeah. for well, the that, price and of that's Liberty. a U.S. Yeah, I know. That's pretty much right. Wow. I think it's over forty dollars. Well, over forty dollars in Canada. Well, if you, if you yeah, <laughs> it's well over fifty if you yeah convert that price. But yeah, um, Carol wrote, "I buy fabric for quilts from a quilt shop or online from major quilt businesses or private quilt shops if that's the only place I can find it. I sometimes buy fabric for crafty type things from Joanne. I buy Notions and Best Press from Joanne when I have the forty to sixty percent off coupons. I have seen prints that seem to be identical to quilt shop fabric at Joanne's, but the price, the base fabric, is of a lower quality. Some Joanne stores have Kona cotton." The prices at Joann's have increased significantly recently. I made my first quilt with a combination of Joann and quilt shop fabric. The Joann fabric has faded, but the other fabric has not. So the key point in here is the 40 to 60 dollars, 60 percent off coupons. Um, that's how they get you. Um, but you need to know your prices. You need to know the quality of the fabric because okay, if you're getting 50 or 60 percent off on a, a yard of fabric at Joe Ann's, but if it's going to fade, if it's going to run, if it's going to fray like crazy in that, are you really saving any money on that kind of thing? I mean, the cheaper cottons are available here in Canada. Yeah. The, the, just certain, so, some stores will sell it. I know a lady that went to, to Toronto and went to a discount store and bought a bunch of cotton, cheap cotton fabric and uh, threw it in the washing machine and it ended up coming out in a giant ball yeah because it frayed so bad and somebody said do you know how to fix this and i said well next time buy quality god yeah. how you fix it throw it out start over with good stuff uh with it cheryl says i have purchased fabric from joann's and hobby lobby but i would never purchase from walmart it felt kind of thin to me 
I bought some fat quarters when I first got into quilting from our local Walmart. It was kind of novelty prints. I wasn't making a whole quilt out of it. I didn't buy that much. I just bought a little bit of it. Um, it wasn't too bad, but I didn't really know at that time. I noticed and, the I didn't buy any from Walmart, but I, I did have checked their fat quarters out. The ones they sell here, uh, the weave seems to be a little rough. Yeah, it, it's it. not as it's it's not as. It, I mean, you can't um, when you're looking at regular quilting cotton. Um, you don't notice the weaves that much, so it's a uh, fairly high quality weave. But if you look at uh, the that quilting cotton that, that Walmart sells in Canada, it you can it, you can see the weave the very vividly. Yeah. But then you got to remember what Walmart's all about. Walmart is Walmart's all about everyday low prices, you know, and that's how they get people in there. And it's not just fabric that's cheap. It, most of the stuff, if if we really really look at it, most of the stuff you buy in a Walmart is you know, borderline on the quality kind of a thing. Now, maybe some things are a good price, a good deal. Like um, there's a face cleanser that I buy that's their own. Well, they don't have it anytime I want it now, but it's their own line of products. It's an astringent, you know, and it's Equate. That's their line. It is $2 less a bottle than Clean and Clear. And you want to know something? It's, it's just as good at least as far as i'm concerned it's just as good it, it does what it's supposed to do but you know you've got to face it this is a disc walmart's a discount store so you know they're getting their stuff wherever and if it's not a name brand or a brand you're familiar with well you're taking your chances um but that's how they get us <laughs> you know with walmart that's how they they operate uh alexandria says i have used fabric from all those stores and there are differences but i have not had any issues with using them i think some quilters tend to forget that not everyone can afford to buy high-end fabric as i call it i do not mind using the fabric from these stores okay i take issue with alexandra's comment all right um first of all whether she means this or not i'm reading between the lines and she's sort of implying that there's a snob element here I don't buy my fabric from Joanne's or Michael's Ooh, poo poo poo. I only get it exclusively at quilt stores. Um, given what everybody else has said, well, if Alexandra, if you are happy with what you are purchasing, that's fine. Now, yes, you're right about the whole thing that not everybody can afford what quilting cotton costs because you know, especially lately in the last year, it's just gone sky high. And the whole bit. But here's what I say to those people, and this is going to sound snotty. If you can't afford to buy quality cotton at a quilt store, you can't afford to quilt. Or you're not a serious quilter. Okay? Because you buy the cheap shit and you've made this quilt and you have spent all that time putting that together for it to within a year or two fall apart or fade. However, or it, run yeah if if you want to save some money there are other ways of buying good quality quilt cotton you may not be able to get the first run stuff but you can buy stuff that goes on sale or uh, yeah watch the sales sale or uh pick up uh uh what do you call it um those cuts you know those uh cuts where they're trying to get uh sell the end of a bowl oh yeah yeah like cause sometimes if you yeah. get the the end of the bolt kind of thing or get like a discount. like our store sometimes has like you know bolts that uh uh have uh three meter end cuts or something like that you can grab a one of those and they're usually heavily discounted and stuff like that so there are ways to get good quality cotton at a discount price so however you gotta hunt yeah you do you need to hunt. and if you if you enjoy that and there are people who do they enjoy hunting for a bargain you know kind of a thing well that's fine you know that with that but what i'm saying is anybody who gets into to quilting okay you have to understand this is not a cheap hobby there aren't any hobbies that are cheap okay um if you're going to do a one-off you want to give it a try you don't want to make a big investment in something then yeah maybe maybe 
go for the Walmart fabrics and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but if you would you like, I mean, or or pick a project that you want to do and buy something that's good quality at the, uh, and that you know will last. But if, but if you go if you're fine with buying inexpensive fabric and uh, and and you, I mean people buy an inexpensive fabric to. Uh, for specific projects, like somebody said that they go to Joanne's and get stuff for mug rugs or something like that, stuff that are kind of throwaway projects after a period. Well, yeah, of time. that, yeah, you know, um, I can see that stuff like that. So if you're using it for a specific kind of thing, but if you are actually making a quilt that you want to last for years and years and years, then maybe you'd want to be a little bit more picky about what kind of fabric you're using. And uh, I know it's not within everybody's budget but you no, do but, what you can do. Yeah, but the bottom line is this. Go in with eyes open. Uh, the idea, if you're going, if, you, if you're just going to start out in quilting, I don't want to discourage anybody from trying to do quilting, but if you're getting into quilting, then you should do some investigation as to what this is going to cost you in materials alone for it, because you may find maybe this isn't the thing for you. Because it's just going to cost you. Now, mind you, a lot of people do like more found folding type quilting. Oh, there's and stuff. That's like an that. alternative. You know, when uh, see, I mean, if I go in and buy it, if I were to go in and purchase a shirt, right, in, in a, a store, it doesn't matter whether it's Walmart or or a higher end store or anything like that. One of the first things I've always done is is felt the material of the shirt to see what the shirt material feels like, right? And I've been in Walmart and found that, yeah, the shirt material is lousy, but, or I found they're acceptable and I'll buy a shirt there or something like that at a discounted price. If you go, I've gone to high end stores and walked in and felt their shirts and thought, oh my God, I'm not paying $200 for a shirt mm -hmm. that is crappy quality because I can feel that the material is crappy quality and I'm not spending the money on crappy quality. No. That's just my opinion on that stuff. No, that's true. But, my point is this some people and we've all met these people haven't we we've been in our local quilt store they've got quilts up on display somebody comes in with a friend who might be a quilter but this person isn't but they're along for the ride with them and they go well that's really pretty that would look so that would be so nice to put on my guest bedroom bed or that would be so nice to make it maybe as a christmas gift to my daughter or something like like that and they see a pattern for it and they'll ask in the store oh well you know i'd like to make that well then they you've got to start pricing it out you know like are you willing to spend the money it's going to take you to make that quilt and the thread you know um some people think they can buy thread uh at the dollar store and it's going to work and you know you get a 10 pack of multiple colors of thread for two bucks well no you're going to have problems with that and you know those of us that sew know that for sure but maybe some people don't and they think they can get away with it but as walter said if you're making something that is almost a throwaway item like i certainly wouldn't be making a mug rug from Le liberty of london fabric like i don't think so i don't think i'd be making a tote bag from liberty of london fabric um I could see making a quick, fast, maybe unlined tote bag out of fabric from Walmart or something like that. If I just needed a quickie bag for something or whatever, or I was going to use it to hold something I was giving somebody, um, you know, the gift isn't the bag, the bag is the wrapping kind of a thing, then yeah, I'm not going to waste my, my good stuff that's costing me $20, $22 a meter on something that's going to be a throwaway object but for a quilt or something like that mm, i think you have to be prepared to pay the price however having said that uh, alexandra does say she's had good success with uh when she's bought fabrics at joann's and places like that and we do know we have been told that there are some fabrics at joann's fabrics and that that are are more premium so if you get the premium or something, maybe you're okay. I don't know. Teach his own. 
it's whatever you can live with. Um, yeah, basically that boils down to if you're happy with the product, then and and uh, the end product, then use what you're yeah. comfortable using. I mean, if you're going to make a little simple wall hanging, for example, um, that's not going to be thrown in the washing machine every other month or something like that, where it's just going to hang someplace and, you know, it was a, a quickie project and probably you don't have to worry as much about the quality of the fabric, as long as it doesn't all freight when you're trying to sew and wrap around. The yeah, but, you know, bottom line, line, if you're happy with what uh, yeah. you've paid and what your, what your product end product is, then... No judgment. No judgment. Do what, no do judgment. what, do what everybody wants to do. Yeah. We're, what we're saying is that other people are saying finding in their um journey sewing journey type of thing when they well i just thought that alexandra's comment was interesting compared to all the other ones i've just read yeah the other ones have all been poo pieing it and she's saying she's had great luck with it so maybe she's got a better store i don't know uh with it debbie said i used to buy fabric from walmart they used to have a much larger fabric department with nicer fabrics i don't like the quality of pre-cuts they carry now I rarely buy from Joann's and have found the quality isn't great on some of their fabric. I usually buy online. I have some Etsy shops I like. When ordering from an Etsy shop, I don't know. I'll order something small, so I... Oh, okay, let me read this back right away. When ordering from an Etsy shop, I don't know. I'll order something small, so I learn the quality. I like to support small businesses, and Etsy is a good way for me to do that. And you want to know something? I stay away from Etsy. Um... I don't trust Etsy stores, but you know, that's not because I've ever had a, a, a bad experience. I just, I kind of think, well, are, are these Etsy stores, they're just run by somebody who's got a big bag of scraps and they're selling them online and some are, but some of them are actually legit stores. And there was one place I did order from that was an Etsy store. And I think they were actually located out in uh, British Columbia. And I was very pleased with what I got from them and uh i forget what it was called now it might have been ma ma mommy mama mommy i forget now anyways um yeah so i guess my theory about it just because it's Etsy store doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to get something that's decent uh with it i think the other thing that bothers me is okay am i going to get it but then i guess etsy is fairly regulated as well um so yeah but me i should do, not be so afraid and try again but i like her idea too just order something don't order too much the first time see how you like it and if it's good then you can go and order more or whatever from it. it's a good way to test it out cheryl says i cannot in good conscience spend money at hobby lobby for a variety of reasons not the least of which is their bigotry hobby lobby is not alone in this unfortunately okay so that's what we were saying before about political agendas and the whole bet with stores and i would definitely agree with cheryl from what i know about hobby lobby what i've read and other things i have seen and heard about them and that is probably the biggest killer for me about hobby lobby is that their blatant bigotry um that's there okay so thank you for your comments about that that's really eye-opening here we got quite a bunch of different views um, I think the bottom line out of all of the comments that I saw uh, with this is the majority of people know that if you're going to buy quilting cotton from these types of stores, buyer beware. It may or may not work out for you uh, with that. Okay, so in the uh, headline for today, I said, why I hate Tula Pink. Now, I know this is going to upset some of you. Because, in fact, it'll upset many of you. Because Tula Pink is almost a cult. It's kind of right up there with Bernina. Everybody drank the Kool-Aid kind of a thing. People absolutely love Tula Pink. There are people who collect Tula Pink. They're called curators of Tula Pink. I'll give you an example of one. Adam from Adam Sews. He absolutely loves Tula Pink. And he has, I, I think he's got fabric from every one of her collections and he even goes out and looks for some that have been discontinued and he, he hunts for it he absolutely loves it and that's great but why don't i why do i hate tulip pink well okay hates maybe a strong word okay 
Well, I don't hate Tula Pink. I just find that a lot of the fabric she produces are not in the colorway for whatever that I particularly like, except for there are some that she's produced that have like black and white and some color um, in it that I don't mind. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it, I don't really Well, like. I use the word hate as clickbait. <laughs> I'll be honest about it. I don't absolutely hate Tula Pink, but what I should say is I'm confused by, with Tula Pink. I don't know what to do with it. It is very different. I mean, it stands out, and I am attracted to it. Although, of course, like her name, Tula Pink, she does use a lot of pink, and I'm not that attracted to pink yeah. uh, with it. But she has a lot of artwork in her quilts. Like, I'm thinking of one that actually I found very interesting, but I didn't know what to do with it, so I didn't buy any, is the Alice in Wonderland line. Uh, the caricatures of the characters from that book really were, you know, she's an artist. Uh, there's no two ways about it. And then she has ones that have wildlife, life, the hiccups, wildlife uh, creatures on it and stuff like that. They are the kind of thing that I would think you'd want to cut out and frame because they look like art uh, kind of a thing. Um, but to make them into a quilt. Now, I know what some people do is they fussy cut um, and they'll build other uh, fabrics around these pictures and things. And yeah, that's one way to handle it. Um, but I also find, though, having said that, she's an artist in the whole bit, and I meant that, her stuff is very caricature-ish. Um, and that is just, for me personally, not something I'm attracted to. It's what I consider novelty fabrics. You know, the kind of stuff you'd buy for making some Christmas things or Easter things or Halloween things. That kind of deal. Now, I know some of you are just going to, like, blitz me with the comments saying, no, 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 you can do this, but that, that is wonderful. And, that. and yeah, if that's your aesthetic, okay. Um, and that's fine. It's not mine. You do you. You know, uh, kind of thing. But also... Now, not having ever worked with it, well, actually, that's not true. I'll come back to that in a second. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what I could do with it. Um, and because of that, I am not willing to, because Tula Pink's fabric is usually a premium price because it is good quality. Um, I don't know if I'm willing to spend that kind of money on something that I don't know what to do. Also, I don't want to destroy the artwork on it. Like, you start cutting it up into pieces for a quilt, like, suddenly your Alice in Wonderland characters become disfigured. <laughs> you know, little pieces of body parts sticking all over the place. And I know some of you are going to say, well, what you can do is you can fussy cut it. You can make it, take, like, one of them and make it a in the center of a square and build around it. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I, that kind of quilt, though, just isn't in my aesthetic. So that's why I don't buy it. I did buy some Tula Pink not realizing I'd bought Tula Pink. And if you all remember my Christmas quilt, the ugly quilt, uh, then I found out that when I purchased that fabric, which was part of a kit, and it was flannel. I didn't know it was flannel either until I got it home. So it was in a package. I didn't feel it. Um, I made that quilt, and then I found out that that was called ugly, ugly sweater, ugly Christmas sweater. She was being funny. It was tongue in cheek, you know, the old ugly Christmas sweater idea. I gave it to our niece. I actually gave it to our to our niece's daughter or a dog <laughs> as a dog blanket. And then I got told I gave her a good what I considered a nice quilt. And then this quilt, you know, with the tulip pink. And she didn't know which one was supposed to be the ugly one. I thought, okay, well, whatever, you know. The eye of the beholder. Yeah, use whichever, you know, your quilts now. Do whatever you want with it. Um, Yeah, that's my only experience, basically, working with Tula Pink. But then there is, I can extend this over to Kate Facet. Now, I love Kate Facet. Kate Facet's fabric was what I made my very, very first quilt with. 
And probably I got into quilting more or less because I saw that fabric. I didn't know who K Facet was at the time. And I got it as a kit and I put it together and I learned some basics about quilting. And I love that fabric. And I have more K Facet here at home and I have bought lots of K Facet over the last few years. I am sick of K Facet. And here's why I love the colors, they attract me. I am not a big floral fan. And his are a lot of his are floral. He has some that are not. Um, but I just love the colors and everything. They're bright, they're bold, they're beautiful. But I'm sick of it. He hasn't come out with anything that's really astoundingly different from what he's ever come out with. It's it's all the same old, same old, you know, in my opinion. So I don't buy K Facet anymore. Uh, because yeah, I did that, I'm done with it. And another designer that I really like, and he was a carryover from my days as a crafter, was Tim Holtz Fabrics. And he has a lot of grunge fabrics and stuff like that. And I really like that. And I have made several quilts using his line of fabrics. I still like his fabrics, but I think I've grown away from the grunge look. And that is pretty much strictly what he puts together. That or sort of a more vintagey look that he does. He basically takes his, his fabric patterns from his paper lines that he puts together. You know, he's famous for uh, collaging vintage stuff. So, you know, I put Tula Pink, K Facet, and Tim Holtz all in the same category. Fun. Different. But too much. It's just the same old, same old. And yes, I'm sorry, blasphemy again. Tula Pink, same old, same old. And someone's going to say, well, you haven't checked out her newest line. Yes, I have. Uh, was it Night Glow or Glow Night or something like that? Um, In my mind, it's just a variation on the same theme uh, with her. So I'm sorry. I'm going to get hate mail. I know Tula people will rise up and, and storm, bring their pitchforks and their something flaming and and try to hang me on a tree limb somewhere i know it i know it it's going to happen i mean if adam ever sees this video he'll be cursing me left and right i mean i love what adam does with it though he makes the bags and things a lot of them with tulip pink and that's fantastic now there i can think of something that i would buy tulip pink for um i'm making you know different bags or something like that because i think it, they look fantastic and you can, I think you can save the integrity of the pattern by making it into a bag uh, as opposed to cutting it up into smaller pieces for a quilt kind of a thing. Um, but sorry, just my opinion. You do you. I'll do me. Questions? Yeah, I know there will be some. Okay. You want to say anything about uh, these fabrics? I... I... Don't actually, I, I kind of like, I never really, um, was it you liked K Facet right at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Um, I have sort of a love hate with K Facet, they're a little too wild for me. I was going to say, but yet yeah, you, you, you said you like Tula. I like certain fabrics from Tula, but the ones that catch my eye are the ones that have the, a lot of black and white and have a little punch of color in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I do um, like that. Maybe ones, I look yeah. at fabrics in a different way than than you do, um, and uh, that's the only ones that really appeal to me. But the ones that have like the <laughs> Queen of Hearts and those things that are like pale pink or pale purple or pale green, I don't like those colors, and so I don't like. I'm not attracted to that. I prefer a, if I have a color, I like something fairly bold, but not necessarily too busy. So um, I like this shirt. Well, no, <laughs> that I like, but it 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 um. This is cape, isn't it? No, I don't think it is. I think no, that, I don't um, think that's cape. No, it's uh, a different one. Yeah, and then um. So yeah, no, I'm not that. I like the Tim Holtz, but I think that's getting old looking. Like there's nothing yeah. to um he hasn't really come out with anything. He came out with that late later thing that it's now a couple of years old. That's sort of like the bold colors that are um 
sort of like in, in plot type things or whatever. I think that was abandoned. Yeah, the line was abandoned, abandoned or something. Yeah. And it, um, I don't think it's abandoned. I think it was called something else. No, but anyway, okay. well, whatever. But um, I uh, now that I look at it, I don't. I find it looks kind of dated and old and. Yeah, when he. When I first discovered that he had fabrics and stuff like that, I was all agaga about it. But that's because I was always agaga about Tim Holtz, period, in crafting. Because I love Tim I like, Holtz products. I like but... the lines that, that some of the other manufacturers put out, like Northcott and things like mm -hmm. that, that come out with themes. And then they build around those themes, yeah. right? You know, like they'll have, uh, like the Stonehenge one. And then uh, now that's sort of old. Yeah, but then you get to uh, 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 we'll come out with a set of fabrics that have patterns and solids and that that sort of all go together. And I think sometimes they're they're fre a fresh look at fabric. Yeah. Well, remember the other day when we were coming out of Ultimate Sewing and over on the one side there was all those really brightly bold colors. And at first we thought it might have been yeah. Tula, but it wasn't. It was Free Spirit. Yeah, Free Spirit okay. fabrics. And those, I almost stopped. That no, we're going, yeah. Let's to the free show. Their fabrics are kind of nice. And the um, I noticed that uh, some of the ones that you were using the FIG fabrics or was it the fig? Oh, fig? Yeah, yeah, Figo, 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 yeah, yeah. Figo. Like, yeah, I like those. And I like, um, oh, what's the line now? I can't think. Uh, shoot, it just went <clears throat> out of my head, yeah. anyways. Um, Yes. So you're talking about Timeless Treasures? Oh, that's it. Yeah. I love any I love a lot of the things that come from Timeless Treasures. Yeah. Like because that, they're a little uh, unusual. Cat uh shirt I bought made you yeah. is Timeless Treasures. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there you go. That's kind of novelty. Uh that the those Timeless Treasure, the cat ones and stuff. Um, but I really like them. Uh, I haven't done a lot with them in terms of actual quilts. Like uh, Timeless Treasures had one that was butterflies. And I made several quilts using some of that fabric in that because I love the colors that were in yeah. it and things like that. So I shouldn't say that I don't use novelty fabrics. It it just depends. I guess it just depends. I tend to use more novelty fabrics because I like them in shirts. So. Well, I like them in shirts. I think that's what, they're good for shirts. Because they're fun, yeah. you know. They're they're unusual. That's why I use quilting cotton a lot for uh, fabrics for like uh, these shirts and that. It's because I can get patterns in them that you can't get in uh, regular what they call shirt fabrics. Shirt fabrics are usually dots or stripes, stripes. or something um, uh, really boring. And we know that the shirts that you make with the quilting cotton are very attractive to other people. They stand out because anytime we go anywhere and we're wearing one of your shirts, somebody always comes up to me and go, oh, I really like your shirt. You know, like, because it's unusual in men's clothing. It's not unusual in, in ladies' clothing, but in men's clothing, it's unusual. Men's shirts tend to be very boring. Uh, for the most part. So, yeah. Actually, that's one of the reasons I started making shirts is because one is um, I always find um, I am have an older body. So I. Oh, you do? So I yeah. uh, slim fit doesn't work for me anymore. Not like it did when I was 20. And uh, so I have a hard time finding a shirt that I like that isn't uh, that will fit right. And then um, the other thing is. Uh, is is finding a pattern or a color that I like. And a lot of times I end up buying checks or stripes or dots or something like that. And uh, it's really boring selection for men's clothing. Well, that's basically and all we then, have to choose uh, from in commercial wear. And uh, so these shirts are kind of fun to make and they're kind of they're kind of fun to wear because they're they're different. I kind of put it equate that what you just said about men's shirts then to ladies who put a little bit of color like a pink or a purple or a blue in their hair you know they just have one maybe one spot where that goes in the whole bit and i kind of like that look but when i first saw it i thought it was a little weird but now i get it you're like well it's something a little bit unique a little bit different and why not it's it's just color 
In fact, I was really tempted to say to my hairdresser when I went in and got my hair cut yesterday, I go, hey, could you put just maybe a little streak of blue up between that? That would have been fun. I don't know. I don't do my nails, so maybe I should do my hair. I don't know. Have her put a little pink and blue in your beard. Ooh, for Pride Month, I could have got it all done in rainbow. Yeah, that would be fun. No. Okay. So anyways, yep. Yeah, uh, let the hate mail begin on my hate of Tula Pink. We'll see how that all works out. Okay. So now we're coming to comments from the past week about different things. So let's start start with the ones where I showed you the new bag that I bought for my sewing machine and put my own straps on it to lift it. Um, Heidi said, this was really interesting because um, this is from a very business point of view. You know, I wrote to the company and said, why don't you put straps on the end? See what I've done? Kind of a deal. And all I got back was, thank you, nothing else. Well, Heidi said, companies are noncommittal about suggestions at best because they don't want to get involved with a patent troll never heard that term before many have had to deal with ridiculous lawsuits regarding either vague patents filed on things that are well nigh impossible to describe let alone patent and creative companies or individuals will discard suggestions sight on scene because the authors thereof will launch a lawsuit claiming theft of intellectual property patent trolls don't really want to win the lawsuit they want the threat of the lawsuit to extort them a payout some people will go to an awful lot of trouble to get out of just working for a living. So basically what Heidi, I, I take it she's saying, is that there are people who are trying to make money by making suggestions to companies to do something. And if the company um, reacts to it uh, in a way that might suggest they're going to do it, then the person who's put up the idea says they have intellectual rights to the or property to the intellectual rights or however you want to put that and are expecting my payout money for it i wasn't expecting anything like that i was just making hey wouldn't this a practical suggestion um yeah so there you go people are uh, people that are making practical suggestions are being excluded from yeah from uh it being a real suggestion could be in two years time you'll find a bag that straps on it yeah but do i have a claim on that idea no. no and i don't think i'm the first person to think of this yeah you know like this is just seems like obvious well somebody else wrote somebody called s s1 string fellow i had a and i'll never say it right the tuto bag tuto tuto, tuto. 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 it's like toto only tuto tuto but it's tut t-u-t -T is tut well tuto so it's tuto 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 whatever um, you know what we're talking Tuto. about. Uh, this person had one of those bags and got rid of it because I couldn't lift it into the car. I got one by Everything Mary. It has handles on both ends and is so much easier to lift. They're also much more reasonable in cost. Okay, so I looked up this um, this Mary thing. Um, let me just find the link here. I have it here. Or should I have this up before we started this? Here we go. Okay. Um, and they have some very interesting looking bags. And they make a lot of these bags as scrapbook bags, craft bags. Um, they are considerably cheaper. I'm not sure now. This is this is a small bag they're showing here because look at the sewing machine that's in it. You know, that's not very big. Um, I'm not sure what their biggest bags are. They're kind of nice looking and you can see like on this one see that little brown part that's the strap she's talking about on the ends of them and this one has it too if you look at the pictures more carefully hard to see here but they do have a strap on either end there's one you can see this oh geez why does it turn here you go okay see right there which you know would that be impossible for this company that i bought my bag from to do something like that I mean, this company does. Now, she says that one thing about these bags were that she bought when she bought the bag like mine, that it was really heavy. Yeah, they actually are. And that's before you can get your sewing machine in them. But they're very, very sturdy. Um, I don't know about these bags. If the, the, the ones these bags buy, what was it, Mary? Everything Mary? I have some scrapbooking bags that I bought. Um, that I paid a lot of money for to carry my stuff to uh, crap, crops, 
<laughs> I was going to say to crafts, <laughs> to crafts and stuff like that when I was a scrapbooker. Um, they're not as substantial as the bag that I have bought. Like it has a metal frame. These didn't really have metal frames. They were, you know, didn't have really frames at all. They're just very stiff fabric uh, or some kind of aluminum kind of structure sewn into them. Um, however, they're much lighter. But I can see what she means about the heaviness of them. Um, so under the Singer sewing machine fix, Debbie said, I bought a Singer in the late 70s. The one Walter worked on is definitely older than mine. I used mine for about a decade. When I got my Bernina, I gave the Singer to my little sister and she's still using it. I put a lot of miles on that Singer. I've been using my Bernina for over 40 years and it's still going strong. I do keep my machines oiled and clean. Yeah, I mean, it, time will tell whether or not the machines we're buying now, whether they will test, you know, stand the test of time. Like that Singer though, Holy crap. Well, it doesn't have any um, electronics in it, no. obviously. Which um, is probably the thing that would go first Yeah. on the solar yeah. machine. Um, I mean, I I tried uh, pretty much every, like, it only had a few stitches on it, like different stitches. Like, it had didn't really have any decorative stitches. It just had uh, straight stitch and zigzag stitch and um, a blind hem stitch and stuff like that. And uh, so I went through and tried all the different ones and i made them different lengths and stuff like that and it seemed to stitch pretty well i just stitched it did stitch better after i oiled it well yeah and uh, <laughs> because i don't think i'd been oiled in a long time and uh uh it seemed to work fine and for a basic sewing machine it's it's it'd be good for something really basic i yeah. mean i mean I will go to my machine after using that and then go, oh, this one's much nicer. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, the new machines have, yeah, well, I'm, u I'm used to using the machine I have. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, a bit of a different feel. But, um, but I mean, if, if you only use a sewing machine once in a while and stuff like that, then, um, there's no sense spending great. thousands. And dollars. I mean, in quilting, all you do is straight stitch anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so I think I now understand a little bit more clearly why people are so in love with featherweights, Singer featherweights, because they're well built. Yeah, most of them only do a straight stitch as well. But if you're quilting, that's basically the only stitch you really need for the most part. And they stand the test of time. They're a workhorse. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so here was a question for you. And you've answered this question before, so you don't need to dwell upon it. Raquel wants to know, what patterns do you use, Walter? Well, right now, I'm for these shirts, I use uh, the one called the Gosling. Um, it's a so-so death pattern. Um, and uh, you can look it up online at uh, several different places, carry the pattern. You can get, uh, I'm not sure if you can get a paper pattern, but you can get uh, the one that I use as a PDF pattern where you download to your uh, computer or your uh, and print it out, or you can take a copy of the uh, file and take it to a local printer and have them and print it out. Um, I I have used a Fairfield, um, I think it's called the button up shirt for a long sleeve shirt, and it's by a company called Thread Theory in uh, Vancouver, and they sell both PDF patterns and uh, tissue paper patterns from that. I have a tissue paper pattern. Um, um, it's go yeah, it's called the Fairfield button up shirt or something like that um, that I use. And I have used uh, uh, patterns from um, uh, Sinclair patterns, produces a lot of men's line patterns. Uh, I've used a few of those. Actually, they're very well written. Um, I've used some from uh, a wardrobe by me. Uh, it's a uh lady that uh, makes and sells patterns that, and she lives in like uh, she lives in one of the baltic countries i can't remember whether she's uh uh denmark or um or sweden or something like that and uh her, her patterns are pretty good um i've i've done a few of the, her patterns so um yeah those are the mainly the ones that i've used so you can just do a Google search for any of those names. Yeah, Google search them. any of those names, Sinclair, uh, Wardrobe by Me, Thread Theory, 
Um, they all have online presences. Uh, that's how they sell their patterns. Yeah. So then uh, under the topic of Timu, uh, Kathy says, waiting for my first order from Timu, would be curious why your viewer said not to buy from them. And one, when we did Stephen and Walter live, one of our regular subscribers, uh, and he is from um, Taiwan. Taiwan, M is what he goes by. Uh, he explained this, and he 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 mentioned that he didn't explain it at the time, but he sent sent me uh, a message, and it just falls really nicely in with this comment about why he feels you should avoid Timu, and he says, yes, slave labor. Um, I don't know, Zijing, uh, yeah, Xinjiang or something, something cotton. cotton, which I don't know why that's a problem. Maybe that's a cheap brand of cotton over there. Um, personal data security, IP theft, forced technology transfer, unfair government subsidies, environmental regulations, spy balloons, two Michaels, and blah blah blah. Okay, so basically what he's talking about is TMU from a political point of view, and TMU is in China, and we know all the problems in the world with China, right? And it's this is all political reasons. So basically what he's saying is don't support a company that is basically supporting um, anti-Western philosophy and treating their workers like slaves and things like that. However, you don't have to stop. Have, you don't have to not shop on Timu for all those reasons. After COVID, I thought people people would have learned to diversify the supply chains. I won't try to persuade you. I think Timu will do that for me eventually. And I get the point that M is making here about that. My point is this: um, I could turn around and not buy anything from Timu, and I don't intend to be buying stuff from them reg regularly. Um, at all. Not like I do with Amazon or something like that. I just want to try it out. And, you know, I will buy more of those clips because I like them. Um, and the price is good. But the point is, if you get something that works for you from a company that's going to sell it a lot cheaper than what you usually would pay for it, then people are going to buy it because yeah, yeah. money talks. We don't know what, uh, who supplies Walmart and who supplies, yeah. um, the dollar stores and who supplies like i mean we may be indirectly supporting team use through them i don't know but the other thing too is there's a philosophy here um you know you're talking about what you hear a lot of people say and i don't want to get too political here but what a lot of people will say is i don't buy from certain countries or certain sites whatever because of one they don't pay their workers well they mistreat them um all this kind of stuff but let's talk cultures here. The people who are saying that are people usually in our culture, in North America. When I say our culture, I mean North American culture. We are used to a certain standard of living. And if some other country in the world doesn't have exactly the same standard of level living as we are used to, then we tend to think they're being abused. And they probably are. However, if you live in that country and that's where you've always lived, that's all you know. I'm not saying that's, you know, a right. good thing, but that's the way it is. But I want to do a comparison between Canadians and Americans. Okay? I got thinking about this. Americans and Canadians have a good life, really. We live in privileged countries, okay? Uh, and we're used to certain standards. However, the standards we have in Canada for certain things and standards Americans are accustomed to are very different in some ways. For example... We have heard stories where people don't, Americans don't take a lot of holidays from their jobs because their employers expect them to work a lot of hours. If a woman takes maternity leave, in some cases, her job is gone. They might give her two weeks. In Canada, you get a year and your job is still there when you come back. It is written into our laws for that kind of thing. Just because you're pregnant, you are given time off for that kind of thing but we've heard that in the states that many many businesses don't do that or don't do it on that kind of level well for in our point of view that's um discriminatory against workers that is poor working conditions by our standards in canada 
because we're used to something very different. But to Americans, that's just part of their way of life, you know, kind of a thing. So that's what they're used to. So we tend to take what we're used to and extend it to another culture and say, well, they're being abused. But it's been being abused by our standard of what we consider abuse. So when you apply that to companies about where stuff comes from in the whole bit, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, you know, do things about because it's a human rights issue or things like that. But needless to say, who are we to turn around and impose our standards on another culture? Because we certainly would want another culture coming in and imposing their standards on us. So, and as I said, this gets very political and that, and I don't want to go that route, but I know what M's saying. I get the point he's making. Um, Kathleen says, it was interesting to hear your take on Team U Fabric. I've placed two orders with them for other items and have been impressed. This last order, I took a chance on some fabric, knowing what the sizes will be just to see. And that $5 credit is real. My second order came a day late. And before I even noticed, they sent me a text telling me they'd be putting the credit on my account for next time. So will they continue to do this? This is what I'm saying. They're relatively new. They're trying to build up a consumer base. Maybe over time, those things will change. But yeah, I just look at it as this. It's another source to look at for something, depending on what it is that I'm looking for and the price range. So it's another option. And then the, a comment about U Ukrainian refugees that we brought up on um, Stephen and Walter Live. It says, regarding the lady that took in Ukrainian refugees, that's not a problem and I am not prejudiced. However, if you have already had a bad experience and you take on more refugees, then you have no right to complain. I have helped many people and still help others, but when it becomes an expectation, the help stops. I'm sorry, but once bitten, twice shy. It's a, it's lovely that that woman wants to help, but to what extent do you overextend yourself both physically and financially before you say no? It's not like they are children and they can and are perfectly able, and they can and are perfectly able to pitch in and help out around the house and with the cooking. That is something I would encourage. So yeah. This goes with my point, too. I mean, it's really lovely that this individual has done this and the whole bit. But I agree here with uh, the empty nester who wrote this. She says, you know, once burned. Yeah, like I have no idea why she decided to do a second family. Yeah. Um, uh, after having a really bad first experience. Yeah, you're just and, a, a sucker for pain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that that's the thing. So uh, anyways. That was the comments that I pulled out uh, from the past week from all of our, our videos and that. And thank you all for writing them. And this is going to become a regular feature of So Chatty. I'm going to do that every week. I'm going to go through and look at your comments. Um, because I think they're, it's nice to share these with all of you because these are very valid things. And not everybody reads all the comments under a video. Um, I do. I do read them. But I would rather comment on the comments in this format then sit there and write them down because i'm lazy <laughs> it comes to that kind of thing you'd think i was an english teacher right i should be all about writing mm, not so much so anyways next week we're in the east coast as you know for a couple of weeks and so stay tuned for whatever we're able to put up whenever we're able to put it up and i hope you guys have a good week and everything and well We'll see you soon. So say goodbye, Walter. Goodbye. You thought we were leaving, didn't you? Walter just reminded me, I forgot to show you the mirror, mirror quilt, the one I'm making for my sister-in-law, maybe, and that. So just very quickly, here it is. This is just the top. It's all together. Now I have to find the backing I want for it and get it on Lucy and decide on my quilting design for it. So this is just a quick little peek at that uh, quilt. And uh, when we get back and I get it all quilted uh, after our trip, then I will talk about it in a little bit more detail then. Bye, for real.